So today I want to compare the M2 Pro MacBook Pro with the recently announced M3 model because these are now available at around the same price and both have their sets of pros and cons and so I thought help people decide which one is right for you. Now I won't be comparing every specific aspect because let's be honest guys these are basically the same Macs with different internals. Right from the design we see this because I have them both in silver and you really can't tell them apart for the most part. There is really only one visual difference which is the lack of a Thunderbolt port on the right sides with the new M3 model and that does bring me to the first big difference which is the fact M3 has Thunderbolt 3 ports instead of Thunderbolt 4. Now I'll be honest guys, this makes no difference to me and it likely won't to you guys as well. If anything, the lack of a port on the right side could be a bigger issue since now you can't charge from both sides of the machine, but I most likely would only use MagSafe exclusively to charge the machine and so even with one less port, the M3 still offers more than enough peripherals for most consumers. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. Now because the M3 isn't a pro level chipset, it does only support one display up to 6K resolution at 60Hz or one display with up to 4K resolution at 120Hz over HDMI. Now am I outraged it can't support more displays like the M2 Pro? No, not really because I'm not a loaded guy who has multiple displays to use. If you are then obviously you're a prosumer and so you should get the M2 Pro chipset instead. But for most consumers buying the 14 inch, they're most likely going to be connecting to one display anyways. Another thing the base M3 lacks is the fancy new space black shades, which is really just a dark grey. And so yes, you can't flex on your friends that you have the new new MacBook with your slightly darker grey because you're not pro enough to have that colour. And so colour choices are identical with the M2 Pro and M3 model, but I'll be honest guys, I still think silver is the go-to colour for Macs so I don't mind the lack of space black on the M3. Moving on to the display, there is really only one difference between these Macs, and that's the fact the newer M3 has 600 nits of brightness when watching SDR content, compared to 500 nits on the M2 Pro. Now this won't make a massive difference, and also there are plenty of ways to unlock the full 1000 nits of brightness this display offers, and so don't be swayed by the M3 for the slightly higher brightness, because at the end of the day guys, both these machines have the best mini LED panels on the market. Moving on to performance, you might be wondering which is better, the M3 or the M2 Pro? While CPU wise, the multi-core score of M3 does match the base double binned M2 Pro, which is a configuration you're going to find at this kind of price point. However, because there are more GPU cores in the M2 Pro, this does still have the leads when it comes to graphics performance. Now the M3 does have dynamic caching and ray tracing, which could make up for the lack of GPU grunt, but I'll be honest, I don't really care because I never ever play games on my machine. And in fact, I'll be honest, both these machines perform very similar for the most part. Obviously, I can't speak for everyone. I'm basing this on my usage, which is 4K video editing every single day alongside the usual mix of emailing, writing up notes, documents and scripts, and also watching YouTube and movies. And so for my kind of usage, I've not seen a massive difference. There is also one less fan inside the M3 model, which some might worry about if you're planning to push the machine, but I've been using a fanless M1 MacBook Air to edit most of my videos on this channel, so weaker thermals is a non-issue. I have not picked up on any performance issues with the base M3. But now we come to by far the biggest issue with the 14 inch M3, which is eight gigs of RAM. Now I'll be honest guys, I did not pick up on this Mac slowing down because it does not have enough RAM, since unified memory on Apple Silicon is generally great, however, I don't think that's always going to be the case. You see, as the machine gets older and it becomes more taxing for it to run your versions of applications you use on a daily basis, I think 8 gigs could become a bit of an issue, so while it's fine for most right now, this really should have got 12 gigs of RAM as standards just to future-proof the machine. And that's where the M2 Pro comes out with its trump card because this machine has 16 gigs of RAM as standards, and so even with the older chip and even if it does lose support before the M3, I think it's gonna age a lot better because there is a headroom with the additional RAM. Not only this, but M2 Pro does support a higher memory bandwidth and so this is a major upper hand the older machine has. I know you can upgrade the RAM in the base 14 inch, but do remember that would make it more expensive than a refurbished M2 Pro, so spoiler alert guys, 
I think the best value is with the M2 Pro, even if it does have the slower SSD inside. But let's continue with the comparison because the final big difference between these machines is the endurance. Apple's site claims the M3 gets you 22 hours of endurance compared to 18 hours on the M2 Pro, though do note, these are Apple TV playback numbers, and in my test when editing videos for two hours, I noticed the M3 Pro only lost 9% of charge compared to 16% on the M2 Pro. So yes, that is a decent amount better, but at the same time, I didn't necessarily think the M2 Pro was bad. It's still more than fine for most, and that's the thing about Apple Silicon, the battery life is so good on all these Macs that even the worst performing model blows the competition away. So at the end of the day, if you really are just watching movies and TV shows all day on your Mac, then yes, the M3 Pro is gonna outlast the M2 Pro, but for mixed usage or for more intensive workflows, the difference won't be that major. By the way, one thing I want to mention is that the base M2 Pro came with a 67 watt adapter in the box, but now M3 comes with a 70 watt adapter. Now, is that gonna make a big difference? Probably not because it's only an increase of three watts but technically, that is an upgrade with the M3. And that's basically it, guys, for the differences. Now, if you were to ask me which one of these I would personally get, it would easily be the M2 Pro MacBook because fundamentally, these are the same machines. And yes, M3 being newer does have some advantages, but the fact it has eight gigs of RAM for $15.99 is something I personally cannot get on board with. Again, I'm aware it's perfectly usable for most, but trust me, for longevity reasons, having the additional RAM is gonna be a massive blessing down the line. And so considering I get that with the M2 Pro at the same price, I would 100% go with that instead. Not only that, but raw performance is still better overall with the M2 Pro. In fact, even M3 Pro is in a huge upgrade over this chip. So for those considering that, you could buy this instead. And you wouldn't have to worry about support yet for any of these Macs because the M2 Pro was released this year, so it should still get eight or nine years of support. And so in my opinion, there's no con to going with the older machine. And before someone shouts at me in the comments, yes, I'm comparing new MacBooks to a refurbished M2 Pro and some might be anxious about buying something that's not new. But here's the thing, guys. I have now purchased three Macs from Apple Certified Refurbished, and all of them have basically been pristine. I will admit this M2 Pro had a small blemish near one of its feet, but I've had brand new devices with some sort of blemish out of the box, so this is a non-issue. If you're really bothered, you can return it anyways, but I think for the savings to be had with refurbished devices, it's undoubtedly worth considering, and I can't recommend this enough. However, naturally, refurbished models are limited when it comes to quantity and also, of course, are not readily available in all countries. And so if you don't have access to Apple Refurbished, I would suggest looking at what third-party retailers are offering because they could be doing clearance offers on the M2 Pro, but ultimately, guys, if M3 is your only option, it's definitely not a bad machine at the end of the day. I didn't hate using it, still perfectly fine for my use, though I would suggest waiting a few weeks so that the M3 models start getting discounted because $12.99 or $13.99 for the space model would be amazing value, but of course, if there are no discounts and you want to buy this for retail price, I guess it's decent value, but it's just sad. It was so close to being perfect if it came with 16 gigs of RAM. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.